These notes should go into your spiral. Your title is Articles of Confederation, America's First Attempt of a Government. Before we get into the notes, let me back up. As you guys know, we have a constitution. Um, if you picture my classroom, it's the giant document that is behind where I sit. That is our second constitution. The Articles of Confederation was our first attempt. So what happened? The war is still going on, fighting the British. Declaration of Independence has happened. And the founding fathers get together and say, we need to set up some type of government. If we win the war, we're our own country, and we need to have a plan in place. The Articles was the first one. Obviously, we still don't have that today. Something happened, and eventually they're going to scrap it. But this was the first attempt. As we go through, if you need to pause, pause to get the notes. But these notes should be in your spiral and underline, and you should get down every under all the underlined information. So one thing that's unique about the Articles is there was only one branch. In our current Constitution, there are three branches, but this one had only a Congress known as the legislative branch. Therefore, there was no president and there was no system of courts. Within this Congress, and I'll explain Congress in just a second, all states had one vote. So there would have been 13 states, everyone gets one vote, complete equality. However, not everyone was happy about this, especially the larger states that had more people. So all states were absolutely equal. A smaller state like Rhode Island that maybe only has 10,000 people, they ju have just as much power as a large state like New York that might have 200,000 people. So your larger states didn't necessarily like this. I think you guys know this, but I I'm telling you anyway, and I want you to get it down. What a Congress is, it's a group of representatives who represent a people of an area. Their main job, not their only job, but their main job is to make laws. So let's talk about what Congress could do. And you'll continue with your notes. So the four things Congress could do, they could deal with foreign nations and Indian tribes so they could enter into treaties or alliances with different countries of the world or Native American tribes. They could make laws, but they could not enforce them. Enforce means to make sure people are following those laws. So they can write and pass laws, but they can't do anything to make sure people are following, following those laws. This was a major flaw in the articles. Third thing is they can print money or they can borrow money. And again, those are important things that a country has to do. And they can set up an army. So I know it's not underlined up there, but you need to get all four of those things down. So if you need to pause, please do that. So these are the four things that they can do. Moving on. Therefore, if we look at that list, our national government under the Articles didn't have much power. And they did this intentionally. When they're writing this, they're thinking about King George in Parliament. And they hated King George. They hated Parliament for all the laws they had passed. So they're setting up something while thinking about what they hated. Therefore, the national government wasn't that strong. Congress, in fact, couldn't do the following things. They couldn't tax the people. And you might think, well, that's great, but where are you going to get money to do things? Where are you going to get money to build roads or to raise up an army? Things like that. They couldn't draft people into the army, so they could set up an army, but they couldn't force anyone to be, it, be in it. So if a war breaks out, that could be an issue. And finally, as I mentioned, they could not enforce laws. They could pass them, but they, they couldn't do anything to make sure people were following them. So in my mind, if we have laws, but the laws can't be enforced, then in a roundabout way, there's not much point to those laws. 